Good morning, everybody. That'll tune in here. Hope you're doing well this morning. Um, give me a second for some people to tune in here with us here. Hopefully give you some encouragement for today. I'm Pastor Bruce, and uh, looking forward to spending some time with you together this morning. Lord put something on my heart I want to share with you as we uh, get into this day today here. I think I'll just start by singing what a day that'll be. to the uh, devotion for this morning in just a minute here, um, but if you're tuning in and you got a prayer request or something you'd like to ask or say, feel free to go ahead and do that. Um, we are uh, we had a good good time last night celebrating the Lord's table together as a church family and uh, thinking about Christ and what He did for us when He was sacrificed for our sins. Um, it uh, you know I I believe from studying the Scripture myself that. Uh, uh, Christ was crucified um, on Thursday. Um, the Lord's table would have taken place on Wednesday, and then uh, he was in the grave um, Thursday night, Friday, Saturday, and up from the grave he arose on Sunday. Uh, just from what the scripture teaches, I know that goes against traditional teaching with the Catholic Church and, and different things like that, but uh, uh, I don't really care. Uh, we're just going to believe what the Bible says with those types of things. You can believe what you want with it, but we know that Christ was crucified, and we know um, that it was this week before we celebrate uh, Easter that we think of that, uh, the fact that he was crucified for us. And I think this thought would be an appropriate thing for us just to, to stop for a couple of minutes and uh, just think about what Christ went through for us. And probably uh, one of my uh, um one of the things that uh, grabs my attention the most when it comes to um, what Christ endured for us is when I consider um, what Christ said from the cross. There are actually seven statements uh, Christ said from the cross. And we actually studied these um, together in a, in a, sermon, a seven week sermon series uh, several years ago. Uh, I'm just going to go over them briefly this morning with you. I just want us to take some time to think about Jesus going to the cross, what he endured for us. And, you know, in those seven statements that Jesus made from the cross, um, he has a lot to teach us in those seven statements. So if you have your Bible with you, you want to grab it or 
I don't know if you're watching this on your phone. You might be able to use your phone for that. You might want to go run and grab your Bible for this. Because we're going to be flipping to several passages of Scripture and looking at these seven statements that Jesus made uh, while he was hanging on the cross, dying for our sins. The first place I want to go to is to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. And we're going to look at verse number 34. Luke chapter 23 and verse number 34. The Bible said, uh, Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiments and cast lots. The first statement Jesus made from the cross. His captors had just beaten him, scourged him, mocked him, dragged him down the the Via Dolorosa through the streets of Jerusalem, up the hill of Golgotha, nailed him to a cross, put the crown of thorns on his head. All these things happened. And Jesus looked at the ones who falsely accused him, put him on that cross, the ones who uh, uh, unjustly abused him, and put him on that cross. He didn't look at them in anger. He said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And I'll tell you what, I'm glad Jesus said that from the cross. It's certainly not what any of us deserved. Um, all of us are just as guilty as every person who physically put him on that cross because spiritually all of us put him on that cross. He died for our sins. But I'm glad that Jesus said, Father, forgive them. And that was why he came, was to save us from our sins, to give us an opportunity to be able to be forgiven of all of our sin. And uh, that was the heartbeat of our Savior. And by the way, that, that forgiveness that we see in the first statement of Jesus is the same type of forgiveness that we ought to show to, to each other. Ephesians 4.32 says, Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. And that same forgiveness that Christ showed to us is the forgiveness we ought to show toward each other. And so that first statement he made was a statement of forgiveness. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now we're going to stay in Luke 23 and look at the second statement Jesus made. It's in verse number 43. The Bible says in verse 43, uh, let's, let's, let me just tell you a little bit of what's going on here. Jesus was hung in between two thieves on the cross. And uh, one of them mocked him. The other one mocked him at first, but eventually had a change of heart. And he said in verse number 42 unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Again, this is while they're both hanging on the cross. And the Bible says in verse 43 that Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now that's a great, that's a great truth right there. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. That's the truth of freedom right there. The first statement was a statement of forgiveness. The second statement was a statement of freedom. That, that uh, thief on the cross thought that he was done for, he was going to suffer eternity in hell, and yet there while he hung on the cross, he decided to turn in faith to Jesus, and Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. And uh, it, just, it just tells us that it's not by any merit of our own that we can obtain the forgiveness of our sins. It's just by putting simple faith in Jesus that we are free from sin, and we are given the hope of eternal life. Uh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Today thou shalt be with me in paradise, Jesus said. And even as he was hanging on the cross, he was securing the salvation of those who would turn to him in faith. Just an amazing thing. And so we see these first two statements. The third statement we see from Jesus on the cross is over in the book of John. I want you to turn over to John chapter 19 with me. John chapter 19. And we're going to look at John chapter 19 and verse number uh, 26, John chapter 19 and verse 26, the Bible says, When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. Behold thy mother, he said to his mother from the cross as he's hanging there. He turned to John, his beloved disciple, and he said, Behold, uh, behold, the, behold thy mother to him. And he told Mary, Behold thy son. You know, even when Jesus was in agony on the cross, he never lost sight of his, his responsibility towards the things of this earth. He never lost um, 
uh, sight of the, the love he was to have towards the, uh, the people that had been put into his life. And, you know, especially during these difficult times that we're going through today, sometimes we can get self-focused, um, not think about our family, not think about the people that are around us. But Jesus, even when he hung on the cross, uh, never, never lost sight of that responsibility and that heart for the people that were, that were near and dear to him. And boy, that should, that should be the case with us as the people of God as well. Um, thankfully, uh, as children of God, God has made it possible for us, even if we don't have blood family close by, to have moms and dads and aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters in Christ. <laughs> um, we can love each other like family. We ought to love each other like family. And even in the middle of difficult times, tend to each other's needs. That's something Jesus taught us even while he hung from the cross. And so the first statement Jesus made was a statement of forgiveness. The second statement he made was a, was a statement of freedom. Uh, the third statement was a statement uh, uh, towards family. But here's the fourth statement Jesus made. It was a statement uh, about being forsaken. And I want you to go to the book of Matthew. Matthew uh, chapter number 27. Turn over there with me, Matthew chapter 27. And you can listen to me read it here. Matthew 27, in verse number 46, I believe it is. Matthew 27, in verse number 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? To me, this is the most sobering statement that Jesus made from the cross. As he hung there, I believe the Bible teaches that Jesus bore in his body our sins. I believe there was a cup bearing the contents of the sin of the whole world that Jesus asked to be delivered from, but he knew he had to drink it to bear all of our sins. Well, he hung on that cross, the contents of all of the wicked, vile things we've ever done were poured into the body of Jesus Christ, figuratively speaking, and he became our sin. He, he faced all the wrath and, and guilt and shame for every wrong thing any person has ever done while he hung on that cross. And when that happened, the Bible says that God turned his back on Jesus for the first time in eternity. Um, Jesus was separ separated from fellowship with his Father. And that's when he cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I'm going to tell you something. For me, I'm, I'm so glad. Although I hate it that he had to go through it because of the wicked things I've done. I'm so glad Jesus was willing to be forsaken by God so that I would never have to be forsaken again. Because Jesus, because I put my faith in him, because you have as well, if you believed in Jesus, he's promised us, I will never forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And yet Jesus was forsaken when he hung on the cross. Uh, and the psalm goes, I'm forgiven because he was forsaken. I'm accepted because he was condemned. I'm thankful that Jesus took what I deserved for my sin so that I could be saved, so I could enjoy fellowship with God. And all, one of the best ways you can worship the Lord for what he did for you on the cross is just spending some time in fellowship with him. Because he was forsaken so that you could have that fellowship. And so Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? How powerful is that? I love that. Let's look at the fifth statement. It's back in John chapter 19. If you want to turn back over there to John chapter 19. And in John chapter 19, in verse number 28, Jesus just said two words. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were accomplished, this is verse 28, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. I thirst. Here we begin to see the fatigue Jesus experienced from the cross. This is the only uh, uh, statement Jesus made from the cross that had to do with his physical suffering. He, just, he said, I'm thirsty. It's interesting. He, the same Jesus who said that he was the, the living water, and the, the person who'd drink from him would never thirst again. He thirsted on the cross. The things that Jesus went through on the cross, I don't think any of us will ever fully understand. The suffering he endured, the fact that he even made it to the cross after all the beating and 
the a bloody mess that they made of his body before he ever even made it to that hill of Golgotha. It's just an amazing thing that he even survived that long. But he did suffer. He bled and died for our sins when he hung on that cross. And let's not forget that, Christians. If church family, let's not forget that. Let's not forget to be thankful. Let's not forget to remember what Christ has endured for us. He said, I thirst. We see this fatigue he experienced from the cross. The next statement is in John chapter 30, John chapter 19 as well. It's in verse number 30. This is probably the most popular one. He said in verse 30, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. It is finished. Those are some of the most prominent words that, that we can celebrate now as, a, as the children of God. The price for our, our sins had been paid. Jesus had finished the work he had came to do to pay for the sins of the world. He gave his life as a sacrifice for our sins. And I'm glad that the work of my salvation is a finished work. I don't have to keep working myself to, to keep myself saved. I'm so glad that Jesus has finished the work of our salvation. Uh, the, the, the salvation is not about doing, doing, doing. It's about a done work. Jesus has finished the work of our salvation. And uh, there's no salvation in any other, Acts 4.12 says. There's, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And I'm glad it was a once for all sacrifice Jesus gave on the cross. And he said from the cross, before he gave his last breath, it is finished. And you can rest in that truth today. And you can rejoice in our Savior who finished the work of our, our redemption when he hung on that cross. That is a beautiful truth. And so he said Finished, and that, that we see in that we see in that fulfillment, the fulfillment. Now, here's the seventh and last statement Jesus made from the cross. It's back in Luke chapter 23, and in Luke chapter 23, in verse number 46, Jesus, uh, the Bible says, and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, "Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit." And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Into my hands I commend my spirit. Jesus, uh, there was never a moment when he was not in control. You understand, nobody killed him. He gave his life as a, as a willing sacrifice. He laid his life down for us. And even right before he did die, the Bible says he committed his spirit. Uh, into thy hands I commit my spirit. That, that has the idea of him uh, letting go control. Um, letting go of something he had full control of the whole time. You understand, Jesus was still in control the whole time he hung on that cross. Every statement he made, everything that he endured, he's still God when well, he hung on that cross. And, uh, and sometimes we forget that fact right there. But no one took his life, he gave his life for us. And even when he gave up the ghost, he knew full well what was going to come three days later. And uh, just believing um, in his own promise. He knew he was going to raise again from the dead. And so he prayed, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And friend, you know, people are all in up and ends about this coronavirus. So what if I get it? What if I die? Friend, to, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And if you know the Lord is your Savior, you know full well what's going to happen to you after you, after you breathe your last breath. And it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. And we can have that same faith. Faith in the face of death. Oh, death, where is thy victory? Oh, grave, where is thy sting? The strength of uh, death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us, gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Death has no power over us because of our faith in Jesus. Because of the finished work of Jesus, we know what happens after we die. And so let that be an encouragement to you today. I mean, the worst thing that people think that can happen to them in this world is death. And it is really the best thing that can happen for a child of God uh, because it just brings us into eternity with our Lord. And so we have nothing to fear uh, because of Jesus and because of his finished work on the cross. And as we celebrate this week, the fact that Jesus did die for our sins, let's not forget what that means for us as the children of God this week. And let that be an encouragement to you throughout this day. Think about what Jesus endured for you what it means. Now, uh, it's, it's a sad thing in one, one sense, but boy, it's a celebratory thing in another sense because of we know he lives today, and we know because of the suffering, now we have some great privileges through our faith in Jesus 
And I'll say, if you're tuning into this and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, oh, it would be the best thing, best decision you ever make in your life to trust Jesus as your Savior, to put your faith in His finished work that, that is a done work that can forgive you of your sins and bring you into a relationship with God. And, uh, boy, there's nothing better than that. And I would encourage you to call out to Jesus today to be your Lord and Savior if you've not trusted Jesus as your Savior. And so think about those seven statements. So I know some of you will want to know this, and so I'll repeat myself here. The first statement was a statement of forgiveness, Luke 23, 34. The second statement was a statement of freedom, Luke 23, 43. The third statement was a statement to his family, John 19, 26, and 27. The fourth statement was a statement of being forsaken. It's Matthew 27, 46. The fifth statement was a statement of fatigue, uh, John 19, 28. The sixth statement was a statement of fulfillment, John 19, 30. And the seventh statement was a statement of faith, Luke 23, 46. And so you can go back and look at those and let that be an encouragement to you as you start your day today. Now let me look here and see if anybody has any uh, prayer request or anything like that this morning. We're going to pray and uh, be done with our time together here. Miss Debbie said he grew the tree he knew would be used to make the old rugged cross. That's that's a, that's a good good song right there. Thank the Lord for that. Good. But I don't see any prayer requests this morning, but let's just pray together as we end our time together here and uh, pray the Lord give us a good day and shine as a bright light for him. Lord, we come before you and I thank you for this opportunity to be able to uh, just spend some time together in your word in this different venue. I pray it's an encouragement to those who tune in today. And uh, Lord, as we think about your death for us, uh, regardless of whether we believe it happened Friday or Thursday, uh, Lord, we know that you did die for our sins and we glory and thank you for that today. I thank you for what you taught us even as you hung on the cross and your seven statements there. And I pray those things would be an encouragement to us as we go throughout this day and would remind us of our great reason that we have to worship you. Lord, I pray for our church family. I pray that you will sustain them through this difficult time in our, in our community, in our country. I pray, Lord, that you provide for their needs and be with their health and keep them safe. Um, I do pray, God, that you would help us to shine as a bright light for you and to share the hope of the gospel and the finished work of Jesus Christ and his resurrection. Uh, we have a unique opportunity to be able to shine as a light in, in all the darkness of the things that are going on right now. And so, Lord, fill us with your spirit and use us for your glory today. And, uh, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to use this day uh, for, your, for your kingdom and for your purposes. And be glorified, Lord, in everything that we say and do. We love you, Lord, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, good. I hope that you got an encouragement out of that today. And uh, we'll see you next time.